time I post on any of my social media platforms about postpartum depression, I get so much engagement. It's because it's prevalent. It's happening to a lot of moms out there. Dr. Marjorie Dixon is here. And, and talk about it because it's the topic that doesn't go away and yeah. people really have a thirst for knowledge about it. Just what it means, what they should be looking out for in terms of symptoms and how they can potentially start getting past it and treating it. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the spectrum because not every postpartum depression looks the same. No, and there's the spectrum of disease is such that it's not necessarily temporally the same. So when we talk about postpartum depression, there's postpartum blues, mm -hmm. which is kind of the normal, right after you've had the baby, you're a little tired, you're a little sad, you're a little irritable, yeah. but that's time limited. So that's the first two weeks. So it usually starts about two to three days after you're up and you're nursing and you're trying to care for this new it's being. Overwhelming. It's overwhelming. And that's normal. It's a big life change, right? Yeah. Um, depression is in the whole year afterwards, so mm -hmm. it's not something that resolves after two weeks. It's that kind of pervasive that lasts. So that can be anywhere from two weeks to a whole year after right. it's considered. So that's more than the kind of low, sad, a little bit tired. It is that feeling that maybe nothing is really good. Right. And I think the problem and why it's so pervasive is because, you know, you watch TV, you see people who've struggled with infertility is what I see. They feel like, oh my gosh, I should be happy, right? right. Like this should be the best time of my life. So what's wrong with me? There's a lot of, of self-deprecating uh, speech and talk. Mm -hmm. And also this North American affliction is we don't necessarily always have community around us. So yeah. often we are isolated in this, okay, it's, I can do this. So mm -hmm. it's me and my baby and I can figure this out where it, even the isolation predisposes people to those feelings of sadness and getting lost in that. And then the lack of sleep. I mean, Oof. I used to deliver babies and we'd stay up at night. You get kind of irritable, right? Yes. Like so, but it's every single night and then it's cumulative. So if people are not sleeping, even when the baby is sleeping mm -hmm. in addition to the depressed mood and it's prevalent because it's 8 to 15 percent of women. That's that's a big number. That's a big number and the blues is even more. It's 40 yeah. to 80 percent of women. Yes. But to think that the long-lasting depression with all of the other things compounded on it is 8 to 15 percent of women is huge. I wonder if that has it grown do you know um, over the years? It's not so much that it's grown but it's more people are more aware of it now. Right we talk about it we now. We talk about it much and I think that's really important because it is something that's prevalent and then furthermore when we talk about medicine and what we can do about things if something is prevalent if there's a reasonable treatment for it then that is what is important to inform people about so they can do something about it. Right. So it's not just the, the patient's responsibility, responsibility or, or need for awareness, but it's also from the caregiver's perspective because we don't like to talk about what we, that's something that's unhappy. Mm -hmm. But we have as medic medical specialists, we actually know that it's very prevalent and therefore there's a specific um, postnatal um, depression score called the Edinburgh scoring system. So when mm -hmm. people go for their, women go for their postpartum visit at six weeks, it's a good time to screen for it. So it's really important, whether you're with a midwife or a family doctor or an obstetrician, to, um, to take that opportunity, or if you're that caregiver, to take that opportunity to say, I know that there's an objective scale. I'd like you just to take 10 minutes to look at this mm -hmm. and fill it out for me. Because it has been a validated questionnaire that if people score greater than 10 to 12, then that's a diagnosis of depression and then you know that the person can benefit from therapy which can be cognitive psychotherapy mm -hmm. and or medication. Okay, so what uh, so you've decided you you've discovered that you are in that situation. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit about the treatments that you just mentioned? Yeah. So how do they work? Cognitive psychotherapy is, you know, being with a medical professional that's a specialist in knowing how to do the counseling around this mm -hmm. who can help you voice your opinions, talk about what you're going through not necessarily to normalize it, but to validate you and let you understand that, you know, these are certain things that you can change in your behaviors which might help you. Yeah. Even though you don't feel like sleeping, sleep. Even though you feel like you must take care of your baby, if someone offers, let them help. Yeah. Or go seek help. It's okay to seek help. 
because it's a really rough time. Mm -hmm. um, and if you are isolated, there are programs that exist that are available to new moms that we don't know about. People will come to your house and help you with your baby mm -hmm. if it gets diagnosed. So we're not used to knowing that there are social supports, but we're blessed to live in a place like Canada, that there are auxiliary health caregivers that are available to help as well. Yes. And then the other, not just the cognitive psychotherapy, but there's also medication. So, you know, depression is a real medical illness. It's a brain chemistry change. And people are at risk for it and predisposed for it. It's not just, okay, I feel low because I had a baby and I'm not sleeping. Women who actually have a family history of it, mm -hmm. if they've previously had depression, if they've had depression prenatally or during their pregnancy, they're more at risk for it postpartum. Um, if they live alone, if they're a young mom, if they have a history of abuse in the family, yeah. these are all things that predispose. So we need to be aware and, and be a friend to our other women around us who might be single moms, or even if they're in a relationship where their partner goes off to work. I mean, and I should actually mention that it's not just maternal issues, it's not just the mom, but there's postpartum depression for dads too, That's or partners. So it's important to understand that the prevalence of it makes it very pervasive. Yeah. And it's important to identify, recognize it, and then you can get the therapy that you need. Okay. And the medication, our antidepressant medications, and they don't work instantaneously either. It's not you take a pill and it's magic. It is you take the medication, it takes some time to kick in. It, in conjunction with the therapy, the cognitive psychotherapy, can be helpful over time, but sometimes it takes some time to get through it. To tweak it, to get make sure you got the right... What's right for you. What's right yeah. for you. Yeah. Okay, the most important thing, talk. So talk to a caregiver, talk to a friend, talk yeah. to a spouse, talk to anybody, talk yeah. to friends, um, get it out there and then start seeking some help. Thank you for that information. That's